Hey, welcome back to Vox Terra. And if you haven't done so, please do subscribe and click that notification bell so you know I'm putting up a new video. Well, hey, today I want to share with you what I think should be screaming, screaming, raging headline news across the world that NOAA released his 2020 Arctic report card. And I will link to some NOAA articles citing that report card as well as a Yale 360 article and the National Resource Defense Council. It should be screaming headline news because it highlights the fact that global warming, man-made global warming initially through the excessive burning of fossil fuels, is moving beyond the greenhouse gases we are adding to taking on a life of its own. This is a process known as amplification Arctic amplification in the case of the Arctic or climate feedback. And this means much more to us than just sea level rise. To start from NOAA 2020, Arctic air temperatures continue a long-term warming streak. By Michonne Scott, December 8th, 2020. Citing from that article. From sea ice and glacier loss to tundra greening and wildfires. Rising surface temperatures are at the heart of the ongoing transformation of the Arctic. Above average temperatures predominate, especially over the Arctic Ocean and central Russia. The unusual Arctic warmth of 2019 through September 2020, October 2019 through September 2020 that is, Continue a seven-year-long streak of the warmest temperatures, a little German professor on occasion, warmest temperatures recorded since 1900. Since 1990, Arctic temperatures have risen twice as fast as global temperatures. And here they call that Arctic amplification. From another article, NOAA article citing the report card, 2020 adds another year of extreme warmth to warming trend in the Arctic Ocean. Tom DiLiberto, December 8th, 2020. In many of the Arctic's coastal seas, August temperatures are rising as much as 1 degree Celsius or 1.8 degrees Fahrenheit per decade. Ocean warming leads to a reinforcing cycle. Arctic warming leads to less sea ice which leads to more sunlight being absorbed by the ocean, which leads to more ocean warming. An early retreat of the winter's ice has prolonged the heating period. Again, quoting from the article. Going back to the first article. The warming waters are reducing the amount of carbon dioxide the ocean absorbs from the atmosphere. So now this is referring to feedback loops and Arctic amplification. So think of it this way. That ice... That ice acts as a reflector off the Earth. I've heard the Arctic referred to as the Earth's air conditioning system. So as that ice melts and shrinks, those oceans are now darker. Those darker oceans absorb more heat. Melting more ice, absorbing more heat. So that's one way that we are now going beyond us adding carbon through the, us heating the planet through the adding of excessive burning of fossil fuels. Another way is this heating Arctic is thawing permafrost, and that thawing permafrost is releasing methane. Methane is another heat-trapping gas. So it's not just us burning natural gas and burning fossil fuels, but now it's taking on a life of its own. Additionally, the wildfires cited at the beginning of the article, the, the first article, are also, these increasing wildfires are also releasing more carbon and more heat trapping gas into the atmosphere. And like I said at the outset, it isn't just sea level rise and heat waves, it's the extreme weather, which I explained to you in an earlier video, how this hotter global temperature, these hotter air masses absorb and hold on to more moisture, drying out or flooding. More powerful hurricanes, the higher seas, stronger storm surges. It's also changes in disease vectors like I showed you in my video about COVID-19, or some of them. But most troubling in my opinion, and I'll link to you to that Yale 360 article, and also I've linked to it before to the Natural Resource Defense Council and other places, is not just that the Arctic is our air conditioning system keeping the planet cool, 
The cold Arctic also provides climate moderation. The atmospheric and oceanic currents are dependent on the pull from the cold Arctic to the hot equator. So as that, as that Arctic heats, that jet stream, these air currents are weakening. Hence, we see things like extreme winters happening because the Arctic air masses, what's left of the cold Arctic, can slump down. So remember that when people hit you with, well, where's your global warming? Here's the snow. Well, the, the global warming can exacerbate cold spells by the weakening of that jet stream. And also, we've always been talking about higher global average temperatures. So even if somewhere has a below average cold spell, it's the overall heating of the planet by the adding of greenhouse gases. Hence, it used to be called man-made greenhouse effect. But the weakening of these air currents and ocean currents and the possible threatening to one day shut them off, I think is the biggest threat to us. Because how, how are we going to carry on with large-scale agriculture and advanced civilization without any predictability and moderation of the climate? Well, I hope you found this helpful and my arguments compelling that this NOAA Arctic 2020 report card should be screaming headline news. And it's not because of the power of the fossil fuel petrochemical interest in our media. And that has been the case all along. So until next time, please subscribe, please comment, please like, please help promote the channel in that way. If you care to, please, please donate at Patreon, Patreon or PayPal. And until next time, as always, peace be with you.